Hi everyone, welcome to another session. I hope all of you are doing really good. So, in this particular session, we are going to start with the next segment. The basics part we have already covered and in this segment, we are going to start with our chapter that is working capital management. Now, let's uh, talk about this complete chapter. It's a huge chapter. As per the institute, it is your module number two. I will not be going in the order of uh, the chapters which is given in the module. I will uh, go it jumbled. Because there is a reason, there is an order uh, in which I prefer uh, doing it, right? So in that prefer only, I will be continuing. Okay, sir, as you wish. Now, when uh, we talk about this working capital, this complete chapter is divided into five segments, right? This working capital chapter, it is divided into, basically, it is divided into five segments, sir. Okay, what are the five segments? Let's see, one, two, three. 3, 4 and 5th segment. What are the segments that we have? The first segment is estimation of working capital. The first segment is estimation of working capital. Right sir, what is the second segment? The second segment that we'll talk about is cash management. Again, a part of working capital only. The third segment that we'll discuss is debtors management. Next segment is inventory management. And the last segment is creditors management or the payables management. Creditors management, right? Now, I treat them as the separate chapters. Now, these three, the first three are very, very important. Inventory management is nothing but the EOQ. I'm not going to take up this inventory management part in this. I'm not going to take up because this is exactly the same as EOQ, which we have done in the cost accounting, right? So you must have done it in the cost accounting. That's what I'm presuming. If not done, please cover that in the cost accounting material costing chapter. Done. EOQ we are not going to take up. Creditors management is not important, but I'll give you an overall idea. It is not important at all. Just a simple basic concept that I will tell you about the creditors management. Just a five minute topic that I will cover. Don't worry about it. Right. So the first segment that we are going to start with is estimation of working capital. This is the chapter. This chapter number two that we are going to talk about working capital management. This is basically the estimation of working capital part. Cash management. We will treat it as a separate chapter. Receivables management. We will treat it as a separate chapter. Let's quickly revise what is working capital management. Right. All of you must be having the books with you. Now, what is a capital? Capital is the money that is required for running the business. If I talk about, uh, if I go with the very simple basics, if I ask you what is capital? Capital is the money required for business. Capital is what money required for? Money required for business. Isn't it? This is what is capital. Now, when you talk about the money being required for business, the requirement can be two types. One is the long-term requirement. And another thing is the short term requirement like you also have two requirements. One is the requirement of money to buy a car. That is a long term requirement. Another requirement of the money is to buy the daily utilities, uh, to buy the rice, to buy floor, to buy pulses. That is what that is a short term requirement. When we talk about working capital, we deal with this short term requirement of the money to deal with the day to day activities, to deal with the day to day things. Right. So this is where we talk about the working capital. In working capital, we are not going to talk about the long term requirement of the money. Whenever we talk about the short term requirement of money there, we are always talking about the working capital. That is what is mentioned here. What is the meaning of working capital? The meaning itself says the working capital refers to the funds required to be invested in the business for a short period, usually up to one year, right? You need money for raw material in the business. That is what? That is a working capital requirement. You need money to pay the current liabilities to the supplier of raw material. Usually, if you are buying a raw material, the supplier will not give you a credit of more than one year. He will say, sir, take the raw material, but pay me 
after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, that is the maximum credit period that the supplier will give you. So it is what? It is your current liability. You have to pay that and you need what? You need money for the payment. There is no barter system. That money requirement is what? That is your working capital. Clear? Working capital is the excess of current assets over current liabilities. Now, how do we identify working capital? Working capital is current assets minus the current liabilities. If you are having 10 rupees in your pocket and you have to pay to your friend 2 rupees out of it, right? Let's say you have 10 rupees in your pocket. Out of that, 2 rupees you have to pay to your friend. This is your current liability, right? This is your current asset. That is a cash that is there in your pocket. Now, we need to find out that after making this payment, how much of the money will be left for meeting our day-to-day -day expenses. We will be having 8 rupees from which we can do our day-to-day -day expenses buying a certain things. Clear? This is this 8 rupees is what? This is my working capital. That is the amount that is left with me after paying off my current liabilities. What is the net amount that is available with me for my day to day expenses? This is what is known as working capital, right? It is also known as the short term capital and circulating capital. This you have to remember for MCQ. That working capital is also known as a circulating capital. This is very important for the MCQ part, right? Because somewhere they can mention about the circulating capital and there it should immediately click. Okay, circulating capital means the working capital. Anywhere they can give you in the case study, they can give you in a separate MCQ uh, kind of uh, thing they can give you. Anywhere they can give you. You should know the alternative names. Now, what is the purpose of working capital to meet day-to-day -day operating expenses? for effective utilization of the fixed assets. Why sir? Why it is given for the effective utilization of the fixed asset? You are having a plant and machinery. That plant and machinery is what? That plant and machinery is a fixed asset, right? But you do not have the raw material to be processed on that plant and machinery. That is lying idle, right? And buying of raw material comes under what? The working capital. So if you are not having the working capital, then you will not be able to utilize your fixed assets. So he says working capital is required for the effective utilization of fixed assets for holding the stock of raw materials, spare parts, consumables, WIP, finished goods, book debts for everything we require what the working capital adequate working capital determines the short term solvency of the firm. That means in the short term, whether the firm will be able to pay its liabilities or not in case of crisis, whether the firm will be having the some money to pay off the liabilities to survive. That is the solvency of the firm. Basically, the short term survival of the firm. I can also call it here the survival of the firm. Right. That in the short run, whether the company will be able to survive or not, whether the company will be able to pay to the creditors, whether the company will be able to collect the money from the debtors and all those things, right? Next is there are two concepts of working capital. One is the gross working capital and another one is the net working capital. What is a gross working capital? That means when we are focusing on the total money that is available, that is the current assets. When we are focusing only on the current assets and not this net liability, when you are focusing only on this 10 rupees, okay, I have 10 rupees in my pocket. That is a gross working capital that you are having, right? It is the inventory and current asset consists of what? The th inventories. There are three types of inventory, raw material, WIP and finished goods. Then it talks about cash. Then it talks about the short term marketable securities and other current asset. Other current asset means the debtors will be here. Then the prepaid expenses can be there, right? These are what? These are the other current assets part of it. Great, sir. Then is the net working capital. Net working capital tells that after paying off your current liabilities, what is the net amount that will be available with you for meeting your day to day expenses? So he says gross working capital or current asset minus the current liabilities. In the simple terms, after paying to your friend 2 rupees, that is a current liability. What is the net amount that is available with you for meeting your day to day expenses? That is my net working capital. Now, there is one very important word that is used here. That is adequate working capital. 
he says working capital should be just sufficient just adequate it should not be too much of the working capital right so when we talk about the working capital sir so he says the working capital should be adequate it should be adequate see every small word has some meaning adequate it should neither be in excess nor be in shortage right sir what is uh, the excess working capital how can we have the excess working capital sir excess working capital is for example you need money for your day to day expenses that is let's say uh, 10000 rupees that is the money that you require for your day to day expenses fine sir but right now you are holding a cash of how much 10 lakh rupees is it a good thing sir is it a good thing if you need if you know that your expenses are 10000 rupees you can keep some money extra as a reserve money safety maximum to maximum keep 50000 why are you keeping 10 lakh rupees sir let's say you want to keep uh, this 9 lakh 10000 on this i 9 lakh 90000 sorry minus let's say 40000 more sir what about this 9 lakh 50000 on this 9 lakh 50000 you will have opportunity cost you will have what you will have opportunity cost on this sir how what is opportunity cost on this opportunity cost is you could have invested this 9 lakh 50000 somewhere and you could have earned interest on it if not invested sir deposited in the bank account and you could have earned interest on it Ma make an fd of it and you could have earned interest on it but now you are holding it in the form of a cash isn't it right so it should not be an excess thing shortage is if you know that your uh, monthly expenses are 10,000 rupees and you are holding only 5,000 rupees as cash right now here will be what here will be a shortage of 5,000 rupees the problem will be in meeting the day-to-day -day expenses right the problem will be in meeting day-to-day -day expenses that will be a problem now clear so that is why it is always said that the working capital should be just adequate it should neither be excess nor in the shortage right sir then there are other concepts that is a permanent working capital what is a permanent capital permanent working capital is that level of capital which is which remains always invested in the business let's take an example for example you are getting a pocket money you are getting a pocket money pocket money of 10,000 rupees out of that your expenditure let's say every month your expenditure is 2,000 rupees so 8,000 rupees is still there in your pocket always in every month 8,000 rupees is there in your pocket this is my permanent working capital right this is my permanent working capital now in a particular month let's say it's your birthday month what will happen beyond this 80,000 you are getting 5,000 rupees for your party with friends right this 5,000 which you are getting for a temporary purpose in a particular period this is known as temporary working capital simple clear so this is what is given here the permanent working capital it refers to the certain minimum level of current assets which is essential for the firm to carry on the business irrespective of the level of operation this minimum level of investment in the current assets is permanently locked up in the business and is therefore referred to as permanent or fixed or the hardcore working capital now here one thing you have to remember regarding the permanent working capital as you grow what will happen this pocket money might increase as you grow your requirements will increase your study requirements will increase and this pocket money might increase from 8000 to 12000 that means as the as you grow this requirement this permanent working capital requirement may increase the same thing is it grows with the size of the business that is greater the size of business greater is the requirement of permanent working capital right the same thing here with the pocket money example you just have to remember that as the pocket money might grow as you grow your requirements will increase so your pocket money the permanent pocket money will increase the temporary will be a separate thing sir right so that is permanent working capital then there is a temporary working capital it refers to the amount of working capital over and above the fixed minimum amount of working capital which is required to meet the seasonal and other temporary requirements right 
what is the temporary requirement temporary requirement is it's your birthday month you want to give party to your friends right so it is what it is a temporary requirement for that when you are going to raise the money that is known as temporary working capital very important right the amount of temporary working capital fluctuates depending upon the changes in the production and sales depending upon the production depending upon the sales depending upon the demand in the market depending upon the seasonal changes this temporary working capital may change right it is also known as fluctuating or variable or the seasonal working capital right so these are the alternative names and alternative names uh, are always important you must remember the alternative names also because uh, anywhere in the mcq anywhere in the case study anywhere the alternative names can be used now uh, let's talk about the working capital now in case of the firm uh, there are basically two types of firm. One is the stable firm where there are no growth opportunities. Another one is the growing firm where the growth opportunities do exist in the coming future. Right. In case of a stable firm is the one in which which has reached that level of operation beyond which there are no or minimal opportunities of the growth in the coming period. There are no opportunities of the growth right they have stabilized they have reached the uppermost level of operations beyond which there will be no uh, too much increase in the demand little bit can be there little bit will always be a scope but too much growth too much expansion opportunities will not be there in case of a stable firm the permanent working capital is stable over time and takes the shape of a horizontal line so this is the level of permanent working capital it is not going to increase sir here we are saying the permanent capital it grows with the size of the business here we are saying that there is no opportunity for the growth right so there if there is no opportunity for the growth permanent working capital will remain at a one level right well temporary working capital is fluctuating sometimes increasing sometimes decreasing so this is the temporary working capital so the, these are the small things which are which are you should know as a base and for the mcq and theory purpose that's it right now working capital in case of a growing firm if there are the growth opportunities which are available to the firm then what can happen sir as the size of the business grows the permanent working capital level will also grow but it will be a straight line it will be a straight line it is not fluctuating sir it is not up and down and the temporary working capital requirement will also increase but temporary working capital will be sometimes more sometimes less sometimes more sometimes less more less more less but permanent capital can increase but it will be at a steady rate clear so growing firm is the one which has ample opportunities of growth in case of growing firm the permanent working capital may also keep on increasing over time to support a rising level of activity and hence the permanent working capital uh, line may not always be horizontal it will not be horizontal sir it will not be horizontal right because there are growth opportunities and as you grow your requirement for the permanent uh, capital will also grow right then uh, approaches to working capital management he says when you need working capital right when you need working capital how will you arrange the money for the working capital let's say you want the money for buying uh, for the purchase of the raw material you need some money right how are you going to arrange that money there are two types of sources one is the long term sources for example the long term bank loan another one is the short term sources right where you have to return the money earlier so it depends upon your nature how you want to approach that right that is what his approach is he's saying how uh, sources for working capital we are talking going to talk about the sources for sources for working capital i'm saying you need money for the purchase of raw material right what are the sources for working capital the sources can be long term sources and the short term sources now it depends upon uh, your approach that whether you will be going for the long term or whether you will be going for the short term sources of the working capital short term sources where the money is to be returned within a very short span of time mostly it is within a period of one year you have to return the money from whom you have taken the money right long term is you can return the money after four years five years and so on right so based on that they have developed the aggressive approach what is an aggressive approach 
under the aggressive approach what will the person do under the aggressive approach the person will say i will aggressively work and return the money within a less period of time so he is dependent or he is focused more on the short term sources of finance and not on the long term sources of finance he is aggressive in the working also is quite aggressive he says i will work aggressively i will return the money very quickly so i'm going for the short term sources i don't need uh, the debt for a long period of time i will return it very quickly okay they say okay as you wish so all the temporary current assets and some portion of permanent current assets are financed with the short term sources of the funds temporary current assets always going to be financed with the short term sources and even the permanent working capital current asset here means the working capital even the some part of the permanent working capital is going to fund it through the short term sources and some portion of the permanent uh, working capital is going to be financed with the long term sources only some part is going to finance it with the long term funds but he is majorly focused on what he is majorly focused on the short term sources right so permanent working capital some part is financed with the long term financing but the other part is with the short term sources of the finance he is happy with the short term sources of financer clear next is the conservative approach what is a conservative approach all the permanent conservative one is like i don't want to take the risk i don't want to take the risk anyhow i am going for the long term sources what happens if i am not able to pay within a one year so why to go for the short term sources na sir focus more on the long term sources fine sir under conservative approach all the permanent current assets and some portion of temporary current assets are financed with the long term sources he says what is my permanent working capital at least that much to i have to source it with the long term only and even the temporary working capital some part i will finance it through long term sources the other part i will finance it through the short term sources right and some portion of the temporary current assets are financed with the short term sources of the funds clear this is a conservative approach the conservative person is not ready to take on too much of the risk too much of the tension he doesn't want he says i'll go for the long term sources simple boss then next is the matching or the hedging approach the hedging is in between the aggressive and conservative a balanced approach under matching approach all the permanent current assets are financed with the long term sources and all the temporary current assets are financed with the short term sources of funds that is a balanced approach very simple clear so these are the three approaches that is the aggressive approach conservative approach and the matching or the hedging approach this you should know for the theoretical purposes done sir now this is about the basics of working capital that what is a working capital sir the next thing is why do we need a working capital that is a very 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 important concept why do we need working capital now working capital is required for the reason for the because of the existence of the operating cycle right why do we need working capital because of the existence of the operating cycle let's try to understand what is an operating cycle right in a very quick and simple manner we will be understanding so we say why there is a need for working capital why there is a need for working capital you can uh, write down if you want a few things you can write down that's your totally your wish right otherwise uh, this most of the things are given in the book itself but some examples and all uh, if you want to write down that is your choice right for your comfort now what is the need for working capital the need for working capital is the existence of operating cycle it is the existence of what existence of operating cycle operating cycle right sir now sir please explain a little bit what is an operating cycle <clears throat> what is an operating cycle now this operating cycle is studied from two angles one is the operating cycle for a trader which is a very small and very simple operating cycle right and another one is the manufacturer 
ओके सर फॉर अ ट्रेडर एंड फॉर अ मैन्युफैक्चरर नाउ व्हेन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी ऑपरेटिंग साइकिल यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन ओनली टू थिंग्स राइट टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑपरेटिंग साइकिल यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन टू थिंग्स व्हाट आर दोज टू थिंग्स दैट यू नीड टू फोकस ऑन द वन पार्ट ऑफ इट इज इन्वेस्टमेंट the first thing that you need to focus on is the investment and another part that you need to focus on is the recovery investment and recovery that means in the simple terms if you want to remember operating cycle is what it is the time period between the investment investment is what when the money is flowing out of your pocket and between the investment and recovery recovery is when that money will flow back to your pocket right so it is the time gap between these two events one the money flowing out of your pocket another one the money flowing in your pocket flowing back in your pocket investment and the recovery of that investment right for example let's uh, talk about the trader now let's first talk about for the trader that how the operating cycle is determined for a trader right let's say this is a trader and this trader purchases the certain goods on 1st of april this trader purchases purchases uh, the goods worth rupees 10 lakh now my simple question to all of you is this purchaser going to sell all the goods on the same day itself is the purchaser going to sell all the goods on the same day itself no sir obviously the trader is what he is going to buy the goods and he is going to sell the goods directly there is no processing there is no manufacturing nothing but it will take some time for the goods to get processed right so let's say by 31st of december let's say by 31st of december he has sold all goods he has sold all uh, goods right worth rupees 10 lakh now just think about it close your eyes think about it when is the money being invested and he is purchasing on cash he is selling on cash this is what we are assuming purchasing on cash selling on cash just think about it when is the money getting invested what is an investment investment is the money flowing out of your pocket out of your pocket when is the money flowing out of your pocket on 1st of april so what is the investment here this is the investment this is the investment here sir and what when is the recovery taking place recovery is what recovery is money flowing into your pocket money flowing back into your pocket so recovery is taking place on 30 by 31st of 12 so this time period between these two things what is the time period between these two things that is 9 months right this is 9 months this 9 months is what this is known as my operating cycle right this 9 months is what this is known as my operating cycle so operating cycle is basically the time period between the investment and the recovery of that investment this is a very simple one for a trader now let's talk about what is there for a manufacturer how the operating cycle is determined for a manufacturer let's talk about a manufacturer now little bit we'll talk about here then uh, we'll talk about in details how the calculations are done the concept i want to cover in this particular lecture then the calculations part i'll take up in the next lecture now let's talk about how for the manufacturer the operating cycle is determined just follow the flow chart that i'm going to make right you will be able to understand everything with one just one simple flow chart that i'm going to make okay sir as you say now what is the event now what are the transactions for a manufacturer just think about it you want to manufacture a particular t-shirt what will be the first transaction for the manufacturing what will be your first step the first step will be the purchase of raw material isn't it without the raw material can you manufacture a t-shirt absolutely no sir now okay so the first step here is let's say on 1st of april you have purchased 
purchased raw material worth rupees 5 lakh 5 lakh on credit of 30 days on a credit of 30 days right on a credit of 30 days you have purchased okay the supplier says take up take away the raw material pay me after 30 days this is the credit period okay fine sir so uh, you get the raw material where will you keep the raw material you will keep the raw material in the store first right you will not directly issue it to production until and unless it is an emergency you are not going to issue it to production you will buy the raw material you will keep it in your store fine fine sir now on 30th of april on 30th of april what happens is 30 days over now you have to make the payment this is what the payment to supplier this is what the payment to supplier fine sir this is my payment to supplier now after this after this on uh, 31st of may rm issued to wip rm issued to wip now your raw material you are issuing it from the store for the production okay sir now in the production itself it is going to take a certain time to process the raw material and convert it into finished goods yes sir let's say till 30th of june uh, now your wip converted to fg right now, once the WIP has been converted into finished goods, are you going to sell all the finished goods in a one single day? No, sir. It will take a certain time. Let's say it takes a period of one month. On 31st of 7, sold finished goods on credit of 30 days. Now, if the credit of 30 days is there, when are you going to recover the money? If there is a credit period of 30 days, when are you going to get the money from the debtors? That is by... 31st of August receipt of money from debtors here we are going to have receipt of money receipt of money from debtors isn't it yes sir now just think about it close your eyes again just just imagine this flow chart Close your eyes, imagine this flow chart and think about when is the money getting invested? Answer yourself, when is the money getting invested? Close your eyes, imagine this flow chart. Okay, on 1st of April, the transaction is there. On 30th of April, the transaction is there. On 31st of May, the transaction is there. My simple question is, when is the money getting invested from your pocket? From your pocket. Whether it is, I'll give you two dates right whether it is the 1st of april or it is the 30th of april when is the money actually getting invested from your pocket and what uh, what i told you regarding the investment the investment is when the money is flowing out of your pocket sir the investment here is taking place here here is your investment isn't it the money is not flowing out of your pocket on 1st of April. The money is flowing out of your pocket on 30th of April, sir. On 30th of April, the money is flowing out of your pocket. Do you agree or not? Yes, sir. And when is, this is on 30th of April. And when is the recovery of this money taking place? When is the recovery of this taking place? Here, when you receive the money, the actual inflow of the money into your pocket, when is the actual inflow of money taking place? When you receive the money from debtors, that is the actual receipt of money. So my recovery will be at this particular stage. Here I will say I have recovered the amount. Clear? Now, operating cycle as i told you is the time period between investment and the recovery between investment and the recovery can you tell me what is the time period here right one month two three four months four months you can say right four months i can easily say or uh, i can say 120 days that depends sir days months anything so this is my operating cycle for a manufacturer simple in simple terms this is the operating cycle for a 
manufacturer now how the calculations are being done and all that we will see later on let's see this is the need for now during this operating cycle just understand one thing sir here here also in this nine months i have explained you only the concept of operating cycle now come to the point why you need working capital during that operating cycle sir you have already paid for this 10 lakh rupees now during this period of nine months do you need money for day-to-day -day expenses for paying the salaries uh, to your staff for day-to-day -day other expenses for tea coffee expenses anything you need money or not yes sir right so during this money during this period you need money for day-to-day -day expenses but you have invested the whole of money here right so this day-to-day -day expenses money that is why we need working capital then working capital is required because during this nine months period this major amount is invested already right you are not having that amount in your pocket it is already invested somewhere now you need money for your day-to-day -day expenses right you have 10 lakh rupees in your bank account you have invested the 10 lakh rupees in the buying of a car now what will happen sir you need money for your day-to-day -day expenses for eating the food for rice flour pulses you need money that is why there is a need for working capital right during this manufacturer also you have paid to the supplier investment taking place during this period of four months or 120 days you need money for day-to-day -day expenses you need money for day-to-day -day expenses isn't it how will you arrange that money this money is known as my working capital this is what we say that working capital is required for meeting our day-to-day -day expenses let's see here need for working capital the working capital is needed because of the existence of the operating cycle this is what i told you that why you need working capital because of the existence of operating cycle operating cycle is the duration of time between the acquisition of raw material and the collection of cash from the receivables basically here if you want to add add acquisition and payment of raw material acquisition and payment of why i am adding the word payment here because here you are acquiring the raw material on this particular date but the actually the payment is being done here so working capital this period operating cycle will start from the payment when the investment is there when the, actually the money is flowing out of your pocket right so i'm adding the word payment here all the sales of the business do not convert into cash instantaneously yes sir sometimes we have to sell on the credit also so there is always a time gap between the sale of goods and the receipt of cash from the debtors the working capital is required to meet the various expenses related to the manufacturing of goods during the above said time gap that is for day-to-day -day expenses clear basically working capital is required to finance the operations during the operating cycle for the business to run smoothly so operating cycle for a trading concern cash inventory of the finished goods then you will sell it receivables from the receivables you will have the cash and this circle will continue operating cycle in case of a manufacturing firm you are paying the cash for the inventory of raw material then raw material will be uh, put into the wip wip converted into finished goods finished goods converted into sales receivables will be there and then you will receive the cash this whole is what the operating cycle right and during that operating cycle to meet our day-to-day -day expenses what we need is working capital simple right i hope the basic concept of need for working capital is clear now please revise whatever we have done till now right i'll stop here so that you people are able to absorb the basic concept of working capital approaches to working capital gross working capital networking capital and then why do we need working capital this part of uh, this operating cycle right a need for working capital is due to the existence of operating cycle and uh, from the trader and manufacturer point of view this is from the trader point of view this is from the manufacturer point of view <coughs> now how do we calculate operating cycle 
right calculation of components of operating cycle and its calculation we will take up in the next lecture it is an important part right and number of operating cycles in a year is est then estimation of future working capital will start it in the we will continue it in the next lecture right please keep on revising side by side whatever we are covering that will really help you see you guys in the next video till then stay safe stay healthy keep studying keep sharing thank you so much